A lot of these might have lost, mate, but at least the All Blacks won. Come on. Let's be positive. Just stop right there. Stop. No negativity. No. Let's be positive. LBP. Let's be positive. All right, Matt. I gotta say before we're positive about anything else, for the last three hours you've had the coldest temperature in the country, but it's been five degrees. So what are you moaning about? It's not in the negatives, mate. No, I'm I'm absolutely fizzing at the moment. Positive. I'm sitting outside <laughs> uh, in shorts. <laughs> Spring's here. It's already arrived. It's arrived early. Hang on a second. You were telling us they the other... They tell me one day this week it'll get to 15 degrees. Oh, stop. Raining. Stop it. You told me that it was 12 uh, degrees at, at 3 o'clock in the morning the other morning. How the hell did that happen? Were you drunk? No, I don't know. Well, the Norwest came through. Okay. But I, where the warm wind came from, I don't know, because it came over the mountains covered in snow. <laughs> so, it was just a, an anomaly. Global warming. Okay. That's absolute evidence of it. Let's be positive be. first about Friday night and your doggies... My worry is, what happened, pal? Well, what happened is, Roger Shuey Vasashek got kicked out of the game for celebrating the victory. Yes. He shouldn't have been celebrating anything. I don't even know what happened the other night, but I'll tell you what. For weeks, I've been bagging the Warriors, whittling wooden spoons to hand out to the fans, and they're not going to get it now. No. So I've wasted my time. So how can I be positive? And the Bulldogs, I mean, what happened to the Martin? They've been magnificent for a few weeks. And then they turn up to the Warriors' home ground, Penrose Park, uh, and and we become we become the All Blacks from a week ago. Yeah, but not on the weekend. Turnarounds, too many turnarounds this weekend. The wrong weekend for it. Look, you know, the, the fact is, is that all that we saw was that you were the team that has won six or seven games all year, six games that you're in the bottom four, that you're miles out of the top eight. I mean, all, I mean that just was reflective of, wasn't it? I mean, this is the whole thing. As much as we celebrate the Warriors win, the reality is, unless you live on planet Cameron George, it's still been a crap season. Six wins is nothing to celebrate, mate. Celebrate that win, but it's not worth, it's not, it doesn't turn the season around. No, it doesn't make anything, does it? One swallow does not make a spring. Is that the say? No. Oh, well, I think that's the say. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I mean, yeah, you're, you're dead right. As much as I've talked the dogs up, we've had three good games, really, in recent weeks. And, yeah, we did look good. But we just fell back into... Um, Normal we habits. Are, Normal habits, mate. Which is just a rubbish team. Yeah. And they put so many points on us. And I bet the people in Penrose Park were just going absolutely berserk. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, somebody finds something to get upset about and kicks out the shoe man. So, now, just explain that that, does that, so what Matt's talking about here is there's a guy apparently who's been a season ticket holder at Mount Smart since 2006 who has a shoey, pours his bear into a shoey, security, throw him out. The thing that amazes me about this is how absolutely vigilant the security was, yet... No one has still been named and shamed for throwing bottles and plates out of a corporate box during the Kiwis versus Tonga match. Now, those people were so easily findable. Why aren't those guys, why didn't security kick those people out? Well, they know who they are. Surely. They know who they are, mate. Surely they know who Everyone they are. Everyone knows. Yeah, they know I mean, who they, they are. they must know who they are. Well, I'm not allowed to get it. They don't hand right and allow people into the corporate box no. without knowing who they are. Well, for a start, the person who's in charge of the corporate box, that person knows who they are, Right. Well, other people in the corporate box also would have seen them. Absolutely. Because they would have been standing right next to them. Yeah. I mean, the guy drunk out of a shoe. Daniel Ricciardo does it on Formula One to a, a multi-million person um, audience. Um, they don't kick him out. I mean, what, 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 what was the actual problem? Look, I, I mean, of all the things that happened at a rugby league game, that's it. Like you... I was forced to watch Married at First Sight at the beginning of the year, right? And the guy, they were poor, wanting guys to do shoeies the whole time. I mean, I don't. Have you ever done a show? Look, if somebody says to me, "Drink out of your no. show," I say, "Go get stuffed, mate." I don't. I don't no, there's don't. no way I'm. <laughs> there's no way I'm drinking out of one of my own shoes. I mean, I wouldn't even drink out of a new shoe. New shoes smell bad too. I don't see the. I don't see the enticement in doing it. No. But whether it's in a plastic cup or whether it's in a shoe, surely makes no difference. No. I mean, maybe they know the guy, and he's got foot problems that. They thought, well, we've got to shut this down for his own health and safety. No, I, can't, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it would have been because the security guard apparently said to him on the way out, that's you for life. That's you for life. They're kicking him out for life? For life, apparently. Is this for real? Well, look, okay, there's a bit more to this. So we've tried to get in touch with the guy, and from what I understand, he doesn't want to talk because there's, I don't know, there's other aspects to it. Anyway, right on. let us okay. move on and be okay. positive about... Well, say what they are because uh, having a shoe, he doesn't seem that bad. 
Is Fozzie going to keep yep. his job? Let's be positive. He won that game. He's not walking. He's not going quietly, mate. Well, they had the game plan. They played well. They lifted. They don't want the coach to go, the players, that is. But listening to CEO Robinson uh, yesterday, I'm not convinced. I mean, he didn't really say anything, did he, that would give Fozzie any certainty about keeping his role. Um, the positive news that came out of that press conference is that uh, there'll be a review this week. <laughs> At least something's good has come out of it. Isn't that brilliant? Because isn't it the best thing that come out of it? Well, of course it is, mate, because there is always time, place for another review for New Zealand rugby. There is an, and what I love about it now is that we've been harping on about this for weeks, mate. Even now, past All Blacks like Mills, Molly, and anyone getting stuck into them about it. You have just become a laughing stock, you buffoon. In your job, I'm talking about Mark Robinson. And right at the very start when this guy got employed, I remember saying to Thomas Harris, young Thomas, my producer at the time, I said, look, as much as I like him as a guy, he's a yes man, he's a middle manager, he's, you know, whatever the equivalent of Chris Luxon was at the time, this guy's going to do nothing apart from sit there, click his pen and shuffle bits of paper around a desk and try and protect his brilliant career and his reputation. I'm not wrong, that's exactly what has been. And the groundswell now, I believe, is turning towards him and going, hang on a second, what about you being under scrutiny scrutiny for your poor performance, mate? Yeah, well, he may very well be under the thumb, and what if the board decides that he is one of the, one of the reasons that the performance has been so poor? I think the interesting thing here is, is that, and I heard you talking about the board before. Yeah. I mean, you can look at the names on these boards, Martin, and very rarely do boards of any sort hold too much expertise about the actual reason that they're a ball. Yeah. You know, what is it that they know? What is it that hey, they're, no, they're going all board to come members. up with no, they're all board everyone else has They're all board members on other boards. That's how they get the job. You're on a board, you, you know, you get onto another board. But in terms of their ability, those eight names of deciding who is the All Black coach to coach into the World Cup next year and beyond, I absolutely will debate and dispute the fact that they have the right knowledge to make that decision because I don't believe there is enough rugby now on that board for them to make that decision. Who should be making the decision, I suppose, is the question. Um, well, the look, CEO should, mate. It's his decision. But he's going to try but and pay... But is he capable? Yeah, but that's it. He's, look... He look, just wants to defer... Absolute, he wants to defer, defect, potentially, defer, defect. his lack of knowledge or courage to make a decision. Yeah. What happened yesterday was an absolute joke. A press conference has been called. The media goes berserk. They prepare. They do it at 5.30 on a Sunday to give people half an hour to prepare a story for the news. They, uh, absolutely perfectly planned. Yeah. And then he says... Well, we're, we're happy with the guys, and we're not saying anything else about everything that people actually want to talk about. Yes, it was a good game, but it was just one game. I'm not saying the coach should get sacked, but what was that press conference about? I mean, what did it actually serve? Nothing. It no was purpose. really no. just to say... Don't ask us until we tell you. Yeah. We're sick of hearing your questions about it. Look, we're going to go away and look at every aspect of it. We're going to dig deep. We, we, I think to myself, when they called the press conference, they couldn't announce a new coach mm. because it would have looked like they'd spent weeks already trying That's to find it. a new and coach. And that, that raises employment and so questions. so it couldn't happen yesterday. That's it. Absolutely. All right, let's turn our attention to, let's be positive, Matt Gunn is with us. Kalen Ponga and Carl Kurtman are a couple of rugby league players who are obviously in love. They go into a nightclub toilet. Um, they obviously are fornicating in there. Otherwise, they're taking drugs. And I'm not going to accuse them of taking drugs in that toilet. Or one of them has been sick. And you know when two girls go into the toilet, one of them holds the other girls here? So, and I don't actually think it was probably that, because I think probably they're both, you know, of the age and stage, they could both vomit by themselves. So they're obviously having sex in that toilet. I think this is beautiful, Matt. I think it's about time another high-profile NRL player came out of the closet like Ian Roberts. And I'm so glad it's Kaylin Ponga. It's one of ours. Congratulations, yeah. I hope you have a civil union and I hope you live your lives happily together. Well, I'll argue. I wouldn't accuse anyone of doing drugs in the toilet. No. I mean, that may be one of the reasons that boys would go into the toilets together. Might away be. from security cameras might to get be. up to something. Might right, be. So, okay. It's a possibility. Possibility. It's a possibility. It's no a, evidence of that no, whatsoever. Whatever. The other thing is, it's the George Michael. You remember when George yes. got caught in the toilet? Yes. That was by the police, though. So these guys were lucky. You know, it's not illegal to do this stuff in the toilets, I don't suppose. The beauty of it was the security guard that knocked on the door, got him to open it up and went, oh, that's a surprise. <laughs> what was the surprise? 
<laughs> well, I'm not sure what the surprise well, I didn't, was. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, but it couldn't have been the hair. No, it couldn't have been the hair. And we all know that ladies do go in and hold the ponytail out of yeah, the eye so it doesn't it. get vomit in it. Mm. Pong has got a, uh, a buzz cut. So we've got to remove that, Mark. Okay. So if we remove drugs and the vomit in the hair... Okay. Well, we're down to sex. Definitely a gay couple. We're definitely... We're de- and definitely. Look, I think it's fabulous. I really do. And and apart from the fact that obviously Israel Folau will condemn them to hell for the rest of their lives, um, and, I, and I hope they wear their rainbow jerseys with pride from here on in, and I, and I think it's great for the game. Let us move on to then your nuggets, because I watched this on Friday night, mate, or Saturday night, I'm sorry. Um, the Otago Nuggets were the last team, Matt, that anyone picked to win the Cells NBL, and it was glorious. That was fantastic. The policeman in town here, Les Andrews, young boy, Jack Andrews, plays in that side. Big red-headed kid. He's a centre. Yep. He uh, was at Twizel School here. He's one of these great stories that a young bloke, he's grown up in a small town, in a small school, and he's moved to Dunedin, to further his career, he's ended up in the Nuggets and they've been going fantastic. And, you know, the great thing about it, Martin, is you say no one gave them a chance. You're dead right. Because there is another broadcaster out there who covers sport in this country and they rang me five or six weeks ago and they said to me, Matt, do you know anyone that might be able to commentate basketball down there? We wrote the Nuggets off. Now they look like they could do something and we need someone down there. Well, that's and you. I said to yeah, them, you're the guy. Well, you used I, to do basketball. I said, well, I said, well, I said, I am the guy. But what I also said was now that B-Max, the coach of England, maybe you should employ a broadcaster <laughs> to be your <laughs> breakfast host <laughs> rather than a sportsman because B-Max hasn't put any journalists in the England cricket team. There you go. And I never heard back from them. Right. I never heard back from them. <laughs> and I think that their talent manager was a little bit offended by that. But I think I was right. Yeah, you're right. No, it's fantastic. All right, finally then, let's be positive. Finally, you split the series in Argentina. Okay, you got absolutely dorked yesterday, but that doesn't mean that the rugby championship or the bled's over, okay? <laughs> yeah, well, it probably is over. We're beaten by Argentina. Fresh. And even Checker, he yeah. said, I, I, I kind of feel bad that we beat them. I mean, how no, can he, he doesn't. say that he feels bad? No, he doesn't. How, he fe- how can he say he feels bad about that? Oh, he's torn. He's, he's torn. He's brilliant, He's mate. torn them apart. Yeah, he showed up with a game plan and he's torn the Wallabies apart and he should be celebrating. He must just want to be able to come home on holiday and not be abused like Eddie Jones. Finally, all right, okay, take you and your shorts and your legs back into the... Well, you don't need to go back into the warm climbs. Is the fire going at 5.5 degrees? Harden up, mate. Oh, no, the fire's definitely going and uh, the daughter has been making um, rice bubble slice, Martin, so it smells like sugar and uh, honey in there. So I will head back inside, actually. <laughs> 